Good morning and welcome to part five of Pyramid Solutions Digital Business Automation Webinar Series, Capture Explained. My name is Dana Carlin, your host for today and the marketing executive here at Pyramid Solutions. Today, Stephanie Kiefer, Pyramid Solutions' own data cap expert, will be teaching, teaching us about the new features of IBM data cap, walking us through a couple of use cases, and most importantly, what does a new digital business platform mean to legacy data cap clients? Change the slide, Steph? Perfect. Um, but of course, before we start, we have to have some housekeeping. So if you do have any questions during any part of the presentation, please type them into the chat box. It should be located in the middle of your screen, on the bottom of the middle. <laughs> um, uh, we will make sure to answer all questions at the end of the webinar during a Q&A session. Um, and of course, the webinar is being recorded and will be shared with everybody after we conclude. Next slide, please. And of course, as always, our views on this webinar do not reflect the views of IBM. Um, so please note today's webinar is by no means a commitment to IBM's roadmap for data cap or anything within the digital business platform. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Stephanie. Stephanie, it's all yours. Thank you, Dana, and thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, so like Dana said, my name is Stephanie Kiefer, and we are going to be talking about the capture portion of the business, uh, business automation platform. So as a very um, high-level agenda, we're going to be kind of reviewing what data cap capability is, um, some of the different product pieces that are included, and we'll be sure to talk about how it fits into the digital business automation platform. We'll talk about some of the new capabilities and um, kind of some considerations that you should make when considering to upgrade. And I won't promise that we're going to go in that exact order, but I will do my absolute best to uh, make sure we cover all of those things. And like Dana said, we'll, we should have a few minutes at the end um, to allow time for questions. So as a review, I hope you guys have all been able to keep up with the webinars we've been doing. Um, we're about halfway through. So far, we've talked about content. We've talked about the um, robotics process automation or tasks. And we've talked about the combination of workflow, uh, case, and BPM capabilities. So today, we're talking about capture. And then over the next two weeks, we'll be talking about decisions. And then also just kind of upgrade big picture capabilities on, on use cases on how to use um, the platform. So. Uh, Here's the big picture. If you've, if you've been um, playing along with all of our webinars, you've seen this in some sort of format or other. But what IBM has done with the business automation platform has sort of um, taken a functionality approach to how they're combining the different capabilities and products that are in this portfolio, looking at sort of business requirements and what business users need to complete work and packaging up those products together to make for simpler, more seamless buying and um, in integration experience. So, um, you know, if you heard, let's see, um, Eric talked about tasks a couple weeks ago, and he talked about the RPA automation capabilities. Um, Michael talked about content, kind of some of the traditional use cases and capabilities with content management products. We heard Mike talk about um, BPM and case being integrated. And I think, you know, I recognize a lot of you on the call, and I know that um, you all come from kind of different backgrounds or different um, focus areas in the portfolio. But regardless of where you come from and where your skills are and the capabilities that you've been focused on, all of these different products and capabilities have one thing in common, and it's that they all need content. And they all need some way to ingest extract valuable information and process the content or documents that come into the system. And that's the data capture portfolio that you see flying across the top. So regardless of how many or how few of the different capabilities you use in the platform, um, you know, most of the time you're going to have some sort of um, need for content ingestion. Um, you know, anybody who's been around the data cap and the capture space has seen a slide that, that looks, you know, very similar to this. Um, and you know, like I said, you know, every industry, every application is going to have content. You know, we used to talk about it as paper, um, 
whenever I go to my doctor's office, I always applaud him because they are finally now a paperless society there at the doctor's office. Everything gets punched in, you know, to a to a MacBook. And when I get my prescription, it's all digital, and there's not a single piece of paper that flows through. And I love that. Um, we don't always have that leisure. There's still a lot of paper. And even if it's even if it is paperless, um, you know, it's still documents. It's still content that needs to participate in workflows and business processes, and decisions need to be based um, on those documents. So, here is um, here is kind of the the picture of the data cap or capture product portfolio capabilities. Um, I heard somebody, I think it might have been Brian at the very beginning, say that well, there's not a whole lot new with data cap. Well, we're going to do our best today to dispel that myth. Um, you know, DataCap has had a very clear role in the portfolio for many years, um, and the basic functionality of it has stayed the same, but, but uh, with every release, there's come new and stronger and more, um, more capable capabilities that come with the product. So if you look on the left, um, capture is the ingestion method for what, wherever your documents are coming from. So over the last couple of years, I'd say like two and three years ago, IBM spent a lot of effort on building up the capability around the capture portion. So, you know, DataCap started its life as paper, and so, of course, you know, it can integrate with scanners. Um, but then, you know, they started integrating with fax and then email. And then over recent years, there's been a really high push to add functionality around mobile capture. There was um, some real deep integration with multifunction printers. And then DataCap came out with more of a, a transactional flow of documents that was enabled by the web service capabilities that really allows you to call DataCap from wherever your documents are living. So, you know, not only bringing them in at the beginning of their life, but, you know, possibly maybe looking at older documents in your portfolio. And, that haven't been maybe text indexed because they came in, you know, before that was real common. But anyway, so that's over the over the past years, IBM was kind of focused on that. But in recent years, um, most of the focus has been on this middle box, which is the transformation. So, you know, DataCap's always been able to, you know, do OCR and find, you know, text in a document and check boxes and and uh, classification and all that stuff. But what you're seeing new and what you're going to continue to see new from IBM is just richer, more um, AI ways of doing things, so more cognitive analytics. Um, we'll talk a little bit later in this presentation about some of the specifics with natural language processing and learning capabilities. Um, there's been some capabilities added for redaction and imprinting of things on the documents as they come in. But the goal, you know, the short answer for the purpose of DataCap is to bring in the documents extract the key data from those documents and put it in a um, structured data format going forward. And not only extract it and structure, make structure around it, but to make sure that it's, that it's accurate data, that it's been validated, that it's been, um, that it's been made sure that it's accurate before the documents and the data get into any repository or get into your business process. And then on the back end, once all that's been done, delivering the documents to wherever they need to go, whatever your business application is. You know, in our world, we, we often talk about, you know, case manager or maybe just a content repository. Um, but going forward and where a lot of the, the energy has been is, is integrating into new areas like RPA, which we'll talk about today. And then we're seeing at Pyramid, we're seeing an awful lot of analytics. So, you know, customers are going through the effort of extracting all this key information from the document, then they want to do something with it. They want to put it into their analytics engines and make decisions um, based on what they've extracted. So that's the big picture. Um, you know, people, what I've, when, I, when I talk to clients and customers, and um, people tend to get really enamored by the cognitive capture aspect. And I just wanted to talk just a little bit about you know, what's traditional, what's new, when you need the cognitive capture, and when you really don't. So, you know, DataCap's been around for a long time, and there is um, definitely a lot of traditional use cases for DataCap. And going forward, there's also going to be a lot more cognitive use cases. So let's kind of talk about what helps you make that decision. So traditional DataCap processing. You know, this is the stuff that really hasn't changed a whole lot. There's been some improvements and some new ways of doing it. But this is just your traditional data cap. So when your documents are less variable 
and you know what you, they look like, you know what to expect. Very oftentimes, it's when the documents come from within your own organization, so you have control over what they look like. Then traditional data cap capabilities may be the answer there. So using, you know, features like zonal extraction or fingerprints, um, you know, recognizing what the document is based on the bird's eye view of the document. Um, you might do some locate using keywords or barcodes or separator pages, those kinds of things. Um, but the key is if your documents are less variable and you know, you, you know what to expect from the documents, then traditional data cap processing is your answer. Um, for those types of use cases, you don't need to, to go crazy and, and do any of the new advanced stuff. But, um, you know, in our world, we don't always have that luxury. Um, probably more often than not, um, we don't know what those documents are going to look like. They come from our end users. They come from, you know, other, other businesses that we work with. It might be invoices. It might be contracts. Um, it might be very unstructured communication. So whenever you have something like that, something where you don't necessarily know what the format's going to be, something where it possibly comes in in different formats, you know, depending on who sends it to you, um, highly variable con content, that's when you start looking at the data cap inside edition capabilities. And this is where um, a lot of the updates and improvements have happened and are going to continue to happen. It's really just wrapping more power around and ease of how you extract content um, from the documents. So I heard, I heard a great answer to this. So how, how, does, how does Data Cap Insight Edition recognize and extract information from documents? And I heard someone the other day turn it around and say, well, how would you do it? How would you, as a human, look at this document and know what to extract and what's important? Um, and the answer is, well, that's how, that's how Cognitive Data Cap does it. It looks at the structure of a document, um, whereas traditional data cap just kind of goes through the document on a line-by-line -line basis. Um, for cognitive capture, the first thing data cap does is, um, is put some structure around the document. So, for example, in this document we're looking at, you know, it's, it's correspondence. It's a very unstructured document. But you see at the top there's some sort of something that's in a bigger font. It's centered. It's probably bolded. Um, cognitive capture knows that that's that's got a little more importance. It might use that as to classify the document, or it might use it to make some decisions about what type of document it is. Um, but that's kind of how, how cognitive capture works. It builds a structural layout, and then it uses analytics to extract key information from that document. So let's talk a little bit. This, this is where um, a lot of the changes have been and where a lot of confusion lies. There's lots of different ways. Anybody who knows DataCap knows that there's lots of different ways of doing anything. So what I wanted to talk about here is kind of some of the new capabilities that have been included um, with DataCap, with the platform, with the analytics um, or the automation platform. So the first is just kind of making it clear that DataCap still um, provides the platform, and I hate to use the word workflow here, but I'm going to. That's why it's in quotes there. DataCap still orchestrates the capture process, um, and DataCap does all the kind of all the basic things. It does the OCR, it pulls PDF text extraction, it does the structural um, analysis, but then you have different choices um, on how you actually um, analyze and extract information. So let's talk about data extraction first. So, um, so built into DataCap is something called the Text Analytics Engine, or System T, is what you'll very often hear it called. called. I'm going to talk about System T and NLU at the same time. So those two engines um, allow you to build custom extractors to pull information from your document. So an example is a policy number. You know that a policy number is always going to look like such a thing like nine characters and it starts with a letter or something like that. System T and natural language understanding allow you to build custom extractors and they also provide a bunch of extractors out of the box like name, address, um, business, geography. These are all pre-built analytical extractors. The difference between the two is System T comes with DataCap, comes with the uh, automation platform with DataCap Insight Edition and it's built in, it runs in-house. The Watson Natural Language Understanding is, uh, is on the cloud. It's the IBM cloud, otherwise known as Bluemix. And I will continue to call it Bluemix for a long time because I don't learn new things easily. Um, but that's the difference between those two. Basically, they, they provide um, pre-built extractors and they allow you to build your own. One runs on-prem, 
One runs in the cloud and comes with the IBM cloud offering. Um, there's, there's another product that is coming. I was hoping that IBM um, would have announced it by now, but they haven't. So I can't talk too specific about it, but I'm just going to give you all a heads up to stay tuned. There's some really cool functionality coming out in the next couple of weeks from IBM that is going to give a lot more power around label value pair identification and extraction. So stay tuned for information from IBM on that just in the next couple of weeks. So those are your, your, uh, your capabilities as far as it comes from extraction, and then of course all kind of your typical data extraction that comes with the IBM platform. Um, let's talk a little bit about classification. So there's your traditional data cap classification like separator pages, fingerprints, barcodes, you know, all that old school kind of stuff. Um, those of you who have done some text analytics um, over the years might be familiar with the IBM content classification. That is another way to do a knowledge base, a knowledge training content classification of documents based on, you know, some known documents. You train the system and then can classify documents. That runs on-prem. That comes, the integration there comes with DataCap. So that's included in DataCap. Um, then we have two additional options to do classification of documents that come with the IBM Cloud. And that's the Watson Natural Language Classification and Watson Visual Recognition. And basically the, the NLC is using text analytics. Again, you train it. It uses text analytics to classify documents. And then the visual recognition um, is exactly what it does. It actually looks at pictures. So again, you train it to recognize um, photos of things, and then it can, it can provide classification recommendations on images that come in through DataCap. If you want to learn more about that, um, there's a blog that I wrote a few months ago that you can just do a Google search and find, and it's just a real high-level kind of introduction to that capability and some use cases where that can be used. But again, the kind of the summary of this slide is that, you know, the DataCap platform and kind of workflow orchestration has been, you know, is the same. That has not changed. What has changed and what will continue to change are the capabilities that you have now embedded in this um, automation platform, the capabilities that you have for performing actions. And I would say just, you know, more and more we're going to see more tools that can be called out from DataCap to make decisions. So to do data extraction, to do classification of pages or sections, um, that's kind of where the focus has been and will likely um, continue to be. So just more power around what you can do and how easy it is to do it and how automated it is to do it. So with the, um, the DBA platform now is something, this is probably, you know, the brand new stuff to most of us that come from ECM background. So the robotics process automation um, comes from a, from a partner, Automation Anywhere, and it's, it's really the, a tool that helps emulate human repetitive work. So it helps automate things that are traditionally done very repetitive in nature. Um, you know, looking at one screen, looking at the output from one system, and punching it into another system. I heard Brian call it a uh, swivel chair functionality. So basically, somebody looking at a couple different applications and manually taking data from one to the other. So with the DBA platform comes this uh, robotics process automation tool. If you missed, I think I already mentioned, if you missed Eric's presentation on that, it was very good. I'd, I'd highly suggest um, going to listen to that. But there is an integration out of the box with DataCap. So I wanted to, to talk real quick about two use cases um, of where that would be applicable. So the first is kind of a traditional data cap on the front end and then basically just handing off to RPA. So in this example, data cap kind of runs the process. It runs the capture process as it always does. And at the end, it hands off information to RPA. So here's an example. It's a customer complaint letter. Um, an unstructured document that would be very manual for a person to actually read the document, you know, pull out the important information from it, you know, who sent it, what's their customer number, you know, what's the, uh, the feeling of this letter, is it, a, is it a complaint, is it a, you know, a happy letter, a thankful letter. Um, you know, it would, take, it would take a while for a human to, to manually do all that. So in this use case, um, the customer complaint letter comes into 
to DataCap. DataCap uses cognitive capture to analyze the document for sediment to maybe extract all of that key information. And then it produces an output in a very formatted, structured data output that it can then send off to RPA. And then RPA continues the process of automating the entry into you know, the customer complaint system or whatever it is that this particular customer is using. The purpose of it is generally when you've got systems that might be legacy in nature or that may not have an API to integrate with. Because you know, you know the data cap would have a capability of writing its extracted data to an API. But let's say you've got a product that, you know, a, a business application that doesn't have an API. So DataCap can then automate the handoff to RPA. RPA automates the entry into the different systems, getting some feedback to your customer faster. Um, that's the first use case. So again, DataCap kind of managing the process and handing off. Oh, and before I switch that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, analytics. So I just wanted to kind of veer a little bit and just say, by the way, um, you know, we've seen a lot of clients wanting to do analytics, and it would be the same integration there. So taking that flat file of data and sending it off to an analytics engine as well. So that's just kind of a, a side note there I wanted to mention. Um, the second use case for DataCap and RPA is DataCap actually embedded in the RPA process. So in this case, RPA is actually managing the process. So in this case, you know, a document might have come in to the robotics process, and a, a bot there might have kept, might have done a screen a screen grab of I don't know email or a document that was sent in that wasn't digitized, a fax maybe. Um, RPA actually does a does a screen print or a screen grab of that, and then sends it to DataCap from RPA. It sends the document to DataCap in a more transactional nature. DataCap then does its thing. It you know, categorizes and extracts, and then again produces that very structured data layout and hands, hands it back to RPA to continue on with their process. So there's, there's other use cases for DataCap and RPA, um, but those are kind of the two big ones for now that we're seeing. Now I want to talk, um, I want to talk real quick just about a real live use case that we at Pyramid have been working on. And I've brought back up our little reminder picture here. So remember, um, day in the life of DataCap is to capture information from wherever it comes, transform that data from unstructured data into very structured um, key elements, and then deliver it to some system. So remember that picture. Here's an example of what we're doing um, with that platform as it lives within the analytics platform, that automation platform. Um, so our use case, and I, I want to say before I even start that this, this is just one example of how this stuff can all play together. We do a lot at Pyramid in the insurance industry, and we've spent a lot of time over the years kind of analyzing and understanding the life insurance um, in industry and underwriting process, and it is very, very document-centric, very time-consuming, and very manual in nature. So when somebody applies for life insurance, there's a lot of decisions and a lot of documentation that go along with the decision of how much to charge um, for life insurance. And some examples of the documents or content that can go into that decision, it might be um, a report of all their prescriptions. It might be a report from a medical data, medical history database. It might be content produced from a phone interview. Um, but the big one is medical documents. So as life insurance companies making a decision, they want to know what kind of health you're in. And you know, depending on the age and the health of the person, there is a lot of content and a lot of medical documents that need to be read and understood. So we've built this um, life underwriting application that uses DataCap to ingest documents from where they come from, um, medical reports, all of those different sources I talked about. And then we use the DataCap Insight Edition, Cognitive DataCap, to extract the key information from those medical documents. So we're focusing now kind of on the big ones, on the cancer, heart disease, and diabetes, but we basically use those some of those cognitive capture capabilities that I was talking about to extract the key data, key information from those documents and then send it on um, send it on to be processed. In our case, we're sending it on to a case manager solution for an underwriter to look at and to make sense of. 
And then we're also sending it on to a land analytics engine. So in the DBA platform, this, this uh, example of a solution is using, you know, the data cap, the workflow, the case, um, and then, you know, some analytics there on the back end. So that's just an example. Um, another client that we've recently worked with was um, using a legacy capture platform. And their immediate need, um, the, the platform they were on, the capture platform they were on was going out of service and they were at the risk of kind of, um, you know, losing, losing um, business uptime, um, losing access to their application. So their immediate need really was to replace their, um, their aging capture platform. In talking to, um, to us and IBM about this platform, they saw um, many use cases that they thought that they could grow into in the future. So um, they ended up purchasing the, the DBA platform, and again, their immediate need was for the capture portion, but they saw the long-term need and all the growth opportunities, and by purchasing it as a platform instead of each individual product, they were able to save, first of all, they were able to save a lot of money. They saved um, $1.2 million over um, a handful of years to purchase the product all as a platform. But in addition, it just gives them the flexibility that over time, um, you know, as it, they're, they're going to upgrade their aging capture platform, but over time they're going to find more and more, more advanced use cases to use the platform, and now this gives them the flexibility to be able to do so. So those are kind of two real-life examples of how Capture is used in the business automation plat platform. Um, before I close, real, real quick, I just wanted to show, so DataCap itself does have quite a few products and capabilities and solutions that come with it. Um, so DataCap Traditional, which is your basic standard uh, extraction and classification capabilities, or you can upgrade to DataCap Insight Edition, which includes all of those cognitive advanced capabilities we talked about. So if you looked at the price book and were purchasing DataCap standalone, those are the two products um, that you could purchase. Those are the two products that become bundled now. Everything that you see in the green square here is what's bundled in the business automation platform. So that's what comes with the DBA platform. The ones on the right, um, are kind of the advanced capabilities, advanced solutions, pre-built solutions, whatever you want to call them, that, uh, that are upgrades and add-ons. There's the curse of recognition and the signature validation where um, there's some real powerful capabilities around understanding handprint and cursive and doing a validation of signatures. So basically ensuring that the signature that you see is the real valid signature for that um, client. And then there's a check recognition application now. It's been out for a few years that basically does kind of the automated extraction from checks. And then the medical claims and accounts payable applications are those two pre-built applications that you can um, add on to DataCap if you have those particular needs. So all of those things outside the box are still add-ons, but all of the basic DataCap traditional and DataCap Insight Edition capabilities are included in the new platform offering. So I think, oh, you know, let me talk just a little bit about um, upgrading. So, you know, as I said back at the beginning is, here's, here's, here's the non-salesperson in me, you don't always have to upgrade to the latest and greatest. It depends what your business requirements are. So if you have an application that is running fine, no problems, that you're getting what you need out of it, there's, there's no need to upgrade to, um, you know, a more advanced capture platform. But I would, you know, I would, I, I think from what we've seen, you know, once our clients kind of start using DataCap and they see the capabilities and the time-saving um, manual processes that can be improved upon and the accuracy that can be improved upon, um, I think our clients start to see, hey, let's do this, let's do this, we can do this, what if we do this? There starts to be a pretty big list of to-dos for DataCap. And in those cases, I would highly um, advise everybody to really look at some of the new capabilities that are coming out with this platform and with the new data cap releases um, and see what new offerings there is to make those jobs and those capture processes easier and less manual and less time consuming. So um, data cap is coming out, the data cap development team comes out with a, I think they are on a quarterly release schedule now. So every quarter they're coming up. Some of them are bigger releases than others. Some of them are, are you know, minor updates, minor fixes, and then some of them are, you know, bigger, more advanced capabilities that they bundle in there. So 
you know, stay tuned. Keep a watch over all the all the upgrades that come out, all the updates that come out. And like I said, there's there's one coming out really soon that's going to be um, that's going to be pretty exciting. We at Pyramid can't wait to get our hands on it. Um, so I guess the short answer is, you know, upgrade to new versions of DataCap as you see new business requirements that can take advantage of them. So that is all I have prepared. I'm happy to answer any questions.